Now this program is totally dedicated to making sure you avoid all the wealth hazards out there. But there's no point being wealthy but not healthy. So I occasionally drag out Dr. Ross Walker, cardiologist, to straighten out all us dumb blokes and the way we approach health. Ross, thanks for joining us on the program. It's my pleasure, Pete. Now, I tell you what, it's so unusual for me to lead off with the kind of story I finish the show with. You're a, a finish the show kind of guy. <laughs> but after the last two weeks of stock markets going down, now they've gone up. I reckon there's been a lot of heart palpitations out there. So, Ross, mm. why are so many blokes in their 40s and 50s coming down with heart attacks nowadays? Well, we, we heard last week of the death of James Galdafini, this soprano star at the age of 51 who dropped dead yeah. suddenly. Evidently, he'd been out for a rather unhealthy meal the night before, but that's not what does it. What does it, Pete, is that as soon as your mother gives you baby food, which is full of synthetic muck, you start building up fat in the lining of your arteries. And over decades, that fat swells to a certain proportion where it can rupture and cause a sudden heart attack. So most people have the delusion that heart disease is caused by a slow blockage from cholesterol in your arteries. But it's not true. If you imagine your arteries like a donut, the blood's going through the hole in the middle, but all the action's happening in the wall. And when those fatty plaques re reach a critical mass, they suddenly rupture. So you can go from no block to a severe block in about 10 minutes. And you can see mm -hmm. there on the, on the graphic how the fat is building up in the wall and then there's the sudden rupture with the fatty plaque and, the, and then the clot in the artery. And so, so what's happening to all of us? Because of our very unhealthy lifestyles and the fact that we're only designed to live 30, 40 years, have our head ripped off by a saber-toothed tiger or die of some infection, not live double A use by date, the excessive fat we have, we're sitting on our backsides. One of the big problems, Pete, is the constant sitting. Many sedentary people, especially in the financial world, and my job, I'm sitting on my backside all day, we're not moving, so the fat builds mm. up in the arteries. Yeah, so, so the thing is this, the arteries themselves, the wall of the artery, yeah. it, 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 in a sense, it attracts what that makes them get bigger and bigger and eventually they explode? Well, what is it that's... It, it attracts one component of cholesterol. Now, most people think that it's the LDL cholesterol that's the bad cholesterol and the HDL that's the good cholesterol. But here's the drum. Not all LDL is bad and not all HDL is good. So imagine the arterial wall like a tennis net and LDL cholesterol is made into large buoyant LDL and small dense. The large buoyant is like a basketball. You throw out the net, it can't get in. The small dense is like a pellet gun. Every pellet will go in. So it really depends on how much L small dense LDL you have as opposed to how much large buoyant and how much good or bad HDL you have. So it's not that straightforward of looking at your cholesterol and saying, oh, my cholesterol is high, therefore I'm going to go on a pill to lower it. So it's, it's how much of this uh, small dense LDL cholesterol you have in your arteries. And we now can measure this and we can also measure how much muck you have in the wall by doing this coronary calcium score. Zero score is what you want. 10-year risk for a heart attack, 1%. If your score's over 400, that's the don't read Tolstoy ranking. If it's over yeah. 400, you're in big trouble and I have to then aggressively manage everything like cholesterol, blood pressure, put you on low dose aspirin, treat your diabetes, it's there, get you off cigarettes, etc. Yeah. So, so I, I guess, the, can people use diet to reverse this, this lifetime of really eating crap in a crappy life? Look, it's not just diet, Pete. Diet's one component of what I call the five keys to being healthy. Number one is to have no addictions. You cannot be healthy and smoke. You cannot be healthy and drink too much alcohol. You cannot be healthy and snort cocaine. Number two, try to cultivate a good quality sleep habit. Number three, good quality eating and less of it. Number four, the second best drug on the planet, three to five hours every week of exercise. And number five, the best drug on the planet, I did a TED talk on this a few months ago, happiness, the best drug on the planet. Those five mm. things together reduce your risk for all diseases by 60 to 70 percent, including taking the fat out of your arteries. Okay, now a lot of people are on statins, yep. and doctors tend to put them on statins, I, I presume, because their cholesterol levels yep. too high. Yes. I, is, is this a smart strategy? No, I don't think it is. I think the strategy is to find out how much muck you have in your arteries. If you have a zero mm. calcium score, there's no evidence at all that being on a statin, even if your cholesterol is high, no evidence that being on a statin will help 
lower your risk for heart disease very much at all. So 10 year risk for a heart attack, 1% with a zero score. The statin takes it from 1% to 0.2% to 0.8%. So a 0.2% reduction, but the potential of a bucket of side effects from the drugs. If you have a very high calcium score, then I think a statin is a smart part of the strategy, but at as low a dose as you can possibly use. Should, so should, should people, particularly men, I know we've sexist here, but yeah. we are the guys, we are the people falling over the faster rate. Sure. Should we be saying to our doctors, can I do a calcium score test? Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, it's done, it's, it's using a CT scan of the coronary arteries. There's no mm. injections, there's no dye, it's very low radiation. So all males at 50, all females at 60, and females get just as much heart disease as men. They just get it 10 years later because they're protected by their hormones until menopause. So they're the standard ages to have the test. But just say, for example, last week, Pete, I, I saw a 42-year-old woman whose mother had a heart attack at 48. She had a cholesterol of about 7.5, and she had a calcium score of 578. Incredibly high. So she needed very aggressive management of her risk factors. Okay. Now, you are, you've often recommended an, an unusual and organic approach to this. Sure. Uh, just tell us about that because, you know, it's, it's, it, a lot of people don't like taking drugs anyway. So if people don't like taking drugs, I guess this is an alternative, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm associated with a company that, that makes a thing called Bergamet. Bergamet comes from Calabrian oranges that are grown on the southern ionic strip of Calabria. That's on the Greek side of, of the Italian boot. And this stuff doesn't hammer your cholesterol but it works directly on the arteries to keep them flexible it, it helps keep the weight off the tummy it keeps down the blood sugar level and it switches you from the small dense LDL to the large buoyant LDL so it, it gives you the healthy cholesterol pattern even though it mightn't totally reduce your cholesterol levels so that's something I recommend to all males over 50 or all people over 50 or anyone who has this metabolic syndrome tendency to diabetes blood pressure cholesterol problems, fat around the belly or cardiovascular disease. And also, if you're on a statin, you can use a much lower dose, be on the Bergamet and get a much better response. Yeah, now, but what does conventional medicine say about this sort of thing, Ross? Oh, look, the, the trouble is that there's a wonderful saying, Pete, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And the hammer that most doctors have is a script pad or a scalpel. So to get them to embrace uh, author, uh, complementary medicine is a very difficult thing, but there is a lot of growing evidence base to show that the appropriate ad addition of supplements such as bergamot, such as a good multivitamin, such as fish oil. And so, for example, if you're on a statin, there's a, a drug called, Co a supplement called coenzyme Q10 that you take with a thing called magnesium orotate. And all of these things minimize the risk from the drugs, but maximize the benefit from your lifestyle, supplement and pharmaceutical program. Yeah, it seems to me, Ross, that a lot of us, us guys, where we've lived the, a pretty risky life in terms mm. of food and, and not exercising enough, that our doctors give us a statin and then we think, okay, that's, that's going to protect mm. me now. And I still, start, I still eat lots of fatty steaks and sausages and stuff like that, but this is going to protect me. Is that a fool's paradise? Yeah, absolute nonsense if you do that. A lot, a lot of people go into the doctor, they're overweight, and says, doctor, I've got cholesterol. And the doctor doesn't say, no, 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 you're overweight. You've got to get your life in your act together. He says, here's a script for Lipitor or Crestor or one of these statin drugs. So the guy walks out and says, oh, well, the doctor didn't say much about me being overweight. I'll just take the statin. I'll forget about my lifestyle. Now, the problem mm. there is that the statin reduces your risk for a heart attack, maybe 20 to 30 percent with the potential for a bucket of side effects, whereas the lifestyle changes reduces your risk for a heart attack and every other disease by about 60 to 70 percent with no side effects. So I, I just don't get that sort of uh, Ill illogical behaviour by many doctors and patients. Okay. Now, Ross, you know, you, you've written a number of books. If, yep. if a person wanted to get his hands on a book that if they read it, actually read it, mm. they would change their life and maybe give them a longer chance of living. And let's face it, I want, I want all my viewers to live as long as they can. Sure. Just the more viewers I've got, the more I can charge Sky. <laughs> uh, so what, what is the best book that they should read? Oh, well, the, the latest book I wrote is called The Five Stages of Health, and it goes through all of this, not just talking about cholesterol or heart disease, but it talks about ways to help prevent cancer and all of our common diseases, things like Alzheimer's uh, and things like osteoporosis and diabetes. So there's a lot of advice across the board in The Five Stages of Health. 
Okay, so people should Google Ross Walker and Five Stages of Health, and they can listen to you on the Fairfax Network. You go out on Saturday nights, don't you? Yeah, two UE, Saturday night, six to eight. It's called Healthy Living. Great, mate. Thanks for joining us on the program. I'll see you soon, mate. Thanks, Pete.